So a war broke out. Uh, it was expected to last for a week or two, but it lasted for nearly three years. And the scale of that war was so massive that close to 1.5 million people died. Mm-hmm. It was a terrible thing. Um, so, so you know, I, I, I and, and it affected my family very well. Uh, I have an uncle who nobody was unaccounted for. He never came back. You know, he joined the the Biafran soldiers. Um, my dad was only a week or two from joining. He was only fifteen. You know, when the war ended. Mm-hmm. So, so but I've I've decided to write about it for a long time. I've, you know, it's the one book I've always wanted to write. Uh, but again, how do you tell the story in a new way, in a fresh way? And. Uh, I found it, uh, again, going back to my mom, who hates to talk about the war, just like every other person who witnessed, you know, aspects of it. And I asked her, I'm like, you know what, whether you like it or not, I'm going to write this novel <laughs> about the Biafran <laughs> war. And she was like, okay, if you want to do that, go ahead. But remember something, uh, those who often tell the story of a thing like a war, like, you know, of, of conflict, are usually the living. But what is the purpose of war? It's basically to kill. So the product of war is death. But the dead never speak about it because they can't. So it's just like, <laughs> this is why I don't like to talk about it. So if you are going to write a novel about a war, then make sure that all voices are heard. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is it. So the, the basic premise of the novel, The Road to the Country, uh, is that the story is told by both the living and the dead. Yes. Oh, goodness. See, that's, uh, see, you, you, while you disagree with my point about the nature of poetry and war, you just made it. No, I don't, I don't disagree, <laughs> but that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> no, but you did, because it's just like this, uh, you've, Taken something you've seen. Yes. You know, poetry is interesting. I, I'm no poet and I'm no scholar of poetry. I just have all these around around me and they teach me. It always starts with particulars. Yes. Something you see. But then the imagination of the poet turns it into yeah. a truth. Yes. A, a, an abstract, yeah. abiding, universal truth. So <clears throat> what you've done is in Orchestra of Minorities – and in this new book, uh, you've brought the dead back to life. They get to tell their story. Yeah. That's amazing. So, and I have, uh, in admiration and friendship, I have adjured you to give it a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> and, <you've, laughs> and you haven't quite made a commitment, I noticed, and, and you didn't quite there either, but I repeat my adjuration. <laughs> People need to be happy once in a while. I will try. It, uh, I promise you. I, I would. I would change the, the ending because of you. <laughs> See that? I don't believe it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so. Uh, I want to explore a little bit because um, what's interesting to me is you open up an entirely different culture to us, to we Americans, and to we in the West, and you're part of both. And uh, that's valuable, I think. I'm going to India in a few days, and you've encouraged me to go. And it's I've been learning about it, and it's a different world. And I'm galvanized by the prospect of going. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, uh, these books you write are popular in America and in the West. And that must mean they speak of something that's common to us all. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I- indeed. Uh, it, it's I think I think there's a mysterious aspect to it, but um, what one does, even though they, they are these grand ideas, obviously that that one is trying to tackle cosmology, war, uh, and all of that. But you know, my story. I believe that fiction is really about relationships, um, and. In fact, connections and disconnections. You know, when I, I teach my course, uh, creative writing course here, I it's I, I tell the students that um, it's uh, it's a lot of things, but at the at the granular level, it's it's that. Uh, 
So you begin with that. Uh, I, I often tell them, uh, my students, that there are two types of fiction, or at least process of writing fiction. One is uh, a, a, a work of fiction where plot is a function of character, and one where is the reverse. Character is a function of plot. I prefer the, the, the former uh, because um, I think that plot usually is inconsequential when you're starting. You think about people. Uh, you, you, you know, there's a guy whom I know, uh, whom, uh, his name is uh, Raphael something. I can't remember his surname. But he makes the, the point that the, the, the first instantiation of an idea in, in, the, in any work of literature is actually place and character. So if you, if you think about a guy like Macbeth, he exists only within the universe that Shakespeare has placed him. If you, ex, you know, if you ex, export Macbeth out of that setting and put him in Hillsdale City, it's going to change him. It's not going to be the same character, you know. Yeah, yeah. So even a, a slight modulation of, of tone, of atmosphere, changes the character of, of the character and of the story. Uh, so I begin uh, from character. So you, th you, you come up with a person, you think to yourself, uh, what is interesting about this guy uh, who is in love, who has gone to Cyprus, sold everything he has because of the love he has for this woman or about this, this, this boy who has been given this prophecy that one of his brothers will kill him and he's become insane because of that. So these are people, so I, I start to think about them, sleep with these people in my mind. And then you send the characters into the world. You know, you imbue them with the qualities that you want them to have. And plot emerges organically from that. It's like setting something into motion and just let it go. And, you, you know, so I don't really worry about plot. It emerges organically once you have uh, a perfect image of character. So, uh, you know, I, I think I may have gone on a tangent, but, but I, no, no, I, I hope I'm answering your question. You're very. Yes. If, so uh, let me, first of all, imagine Macbeth and Hillsdale. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting dark here early. I'm walking home. There are these three witches. Yes. <laughs> they appear out of nowhere. They uh, tell me that I could be the ruler of the universe. And the next thing you know, I kill somebody, and then I get killed by Macduff. Yeah. Except since I know the plot, I might not react that way. Yes. <laughs> it, uh, it's a uh, so fall one in. Yeah. I mean, that's – so he, here's the thing. I mean, in, in the Orchestra of Minorities, in Macbeth, for a time in both of those works of fiction, the protagonist is a wholly worthy character. And so you you subject them to things, and Shakespeare does, that show something else in them. What you're saying is it's not the plot that makes them. Yeah. It's the plot that reveals them. Exactly. And that means you yes. saw that in them, in your mind, as Shakespeare did. Yes. And, and, and that – so, I, I, you know, I love that word. I, I, I remember there's a, an interview I gave some, in some newspaper sometime that came out as the title, Fiction is Re as Revelation, something like that. So, yes, it's, it's indeed revelation, I, you know, and, and I'm surprised by what I see when, when – what is revealed to me once I have taught up those characters uh, – and I, and I think, to go back to your question about universality, that is what people connect with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a, and the fishermen, um, you know, so, so the mysterious part is uh, how, you know, the fisherman, for instance, in his first year, sold more copies in Sweden than in the U.S., mm -hmm. where I live. Uh, and, you know, uh, sold 50,000 copies in China. And, 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 and then you, you, you think about, uh, you know, the fact that these are characters who live in a small town, not even Lagos, an unknown place in Nigeria in the 90s. There's no connection to Chinese 
culture in any way. But but that's that's what they're connecting to. Really, it is the fact that everybody, even if you don't have a sibling, you understand what it means. Hmm. You know, to have one. Uh, uh, you know, you that that sibling bond that that the the, the boys share is 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 in some ways universal. So, but how how one um, and it is, there's something, uh, and that takes us back to the revelation. There's something that is revealed to them through the connection, through the relationships, you know, that the brothers have, or, or that Chinonso has with his, uh, you know, uh, with his girlfriend in in an occasional minorities that moves people. And and you know, so I just I just create this uh, this character and these uh, situations, and and then the reader takes it from there. I think. 